Hey, how's it going guys? Tech Notus here and today I'm going to give you guys 15 reasons why the iPhone 10 sucks. These are 15 reasons why you guys shouldn't buy the iPhone 10 when it arrives in November. The first one is going to be a very important one. It's going to be Face ID. So they are replacing the typical Touch ID which they brought into the iPhone 5s for a new software, a new system where it detects 300 points within your face and it unlocks your, de your device. So they did mess this up on stage. Craig actually messed this up and it's a little bit disappointing and honestly it doesn't look like it's any faster than touch id is right now uh, most likely it's going to be even slower and it'll take a lot more effort for payments because now you have to look directly into the camera and this is a very bad alternative they're not even giving us options such as the retina scanner that is available on the samsung galaxy s8 or note 8 right now pretty much face id is going to be the only thing that unlocks your device and it's going to be letting you do a bunch of your payments online through the app store or in person at a point of sale system. I think Apple failed on putting Touch ID beneath the screen. That's probably the reason why they rushed it and they didn't give us Touch ID because this is a very important feature and it's, uh, it's one of the trademarks of Apple. They just couldn't get it right below the screen here and I think it would be very fantastic where the OLED display can just show a tiny little ring at the bottom and it would just light up for you to touch ID or touch it as a fingerprint reader on the next generation phone. So if you guys wait out for the next one, it's probably be the better upgrade. So the top notch right here is a little bit ugly. I'll be honest with you guys. I probably like the version from the Samsung Galaxy S8 a little bit more, although it does have the top and bottom bar. It doesn't show dramatically and the apps and everything just would fit a lot nicer. Uh, the iPhone X out of the box, it's not gonna look as nice with all your new apps. You're gonna have to have a bar right here and they're gonna have to develop somehow where the apps would kind of move away from the bar every time you scroll up or down. Now the next one is there's just not gonna be an iPhone X Plus. So if you guys are used to the plus size version, the iPhone 8, uh, the iPhone X is gonna be a little bit smaller. It's gonna be a lot taller, but the width of it is smaller. So keep a look out for that one guys. So in terms of waterproofing and water resistance, it is still rated at IP67, so no improvements from the iPhone 7 at all. So you guys can jump in the water for roughly about 30 minutes and that should be it. You guys gotta pull it back up. And this is actually uh, worse than the Samsung Galaxy S8, which is about a year old now and it's rated at IP68. And the next one is the glass back that comes with the iPhone X. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus also has the glass back as well. So first year with this glass, maybe we'll see some cracks, some scratches. We'll have to see how durable the material is used. Apple has also already mentioned that the screen has been improved. So it's going to withstand a lot of cracks, a lot of drops. So keep a lookout for that. We'll definitely do a test versus the iPhone 7. See how that goes. The next one is the iPhone 8. I'll mention that first. Has an actually smaller battery than the iPhone 7 right now. And that's probably the reason why they're not mentioning it on the website. Same goes for the iPhone X right now. They're not mentioning the capacity or what it has, how many hours it can do. It's just referring back to the iPhone 7 and saying two hours more than the iPhone 7, which makes no sense at all. I feel like Apple is trying to hide something from us. So honestly, the iPhone X is probably not going to be much of an improvement, whereas Android devices or Samsung devices are just going plus of 3,000 3, milliamp hours. These one are just roughly about under 2000, which still kind of sucks a lot. So we had the camera bump ever since the iPhone 6. So we got a 5S right here. This is probably the last device other than the iPhone SE that had a flush camera design. And I really like this. It doesn't have any bulging, anything like that. So it's just one smooth back. Whereas the 6 all the way to the newest one has a, a kind of a bulge right at the camera. So the X doesn't change that at all. It actually makes it even worse. So there's going to be a big gigantic bulge right here. And they probably can't do it because the technology of camera right now. But hopefully for the next few devices, the next few years, they do come out with something new. So if you guys want to wait out for that one, probably the best option right now. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because Samsung has figured it out. They also have 4K cameras uh, and it, they record in fantastic quality and it is not protruding. So the Samsung Galaxy S8 is an example of that. It looks very nice. So the next one we all have to ask Apple is how is reachability going to work? Because the screen is now taller by a lot and we don't have the home button anymore. So how are we going to double tap and bring it down so you can have a one handed use experience? Now that's going to be a big issue for people that have smaller hands and they cannot reach all the way to the top. Now it's going to be like a two-handed device. So the iPhone 8 Plus is going to be the same thing as the iPhone X at this point. Now for fast charging, fast charging is not going to be even be included in the box, guys. This is the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Samsung and OnePlus and a bunch of other companies are making fast charging available right out of the box. Apple is actually making you buy a couple other bricks at different amps at different wattage so that you can plug it in and get fast charging. 
So that's a big downer right there. Wireless charging is also not avail in, available in the box and this is already expected, but the fast charging port, so you guys have to fork out roughly about 50 bucks for that brick alone. So the last thing I wanna mention to you guys is the storage size. So we're gonna start at 64 gigs and this is going for $1,000 guys. So this is 1,000 US. We're not even factoring in there's different countries such as the UK or Canada. Now Apple's kind of not even factoring in the currency exchange. They're just putting it at whatever price they think is worth it. So 64 gig is definitely not enough for the iPhone 10 right there. So it's recording with this fantastic camera in 4K in 60 frames per second. You guys can probably annihilate that storage size in about like 30 minutes to an hour of uh, continuous recording. So Apple, you guys gotta up your game, bring it up to 128 gigabytes base and maybe 256 and 512 for the upper premium models. But at this price point, I definitely am expecting much more. So these are the reasons why I think the iPhone 8 sucks or the iPhone 10 sucks. Actually, all the devices suck at this point. I'm not excited for any of the devices, but I am going to be picking them up to do a review. So you guys stay tuned for that. These are the 15 reasons why you guys shouldn't be buying the iPhone 10. Anyways, this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace out.